What is going on YouTube? You know who it is. Mark with the BassWizard.com and I'm back with another bass review video. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing this bass. Now, this is a very, very special bass to me because I've traveled all over the world with this thing. I played a lot of gigs with a lot of different artists. I've played it in arenas, stadiums, clubs, TV shows, you name it. And it's been an absolutely awesome, awesome bass. I've even done a lot of YouTube videos on it that have gotten a lot of views. So this bass has gotten a lot of use and it's been really awesome. And the reason why I like this bass live so much is because this bass will literally cut through anything. It sounds amazing in a mix live. A Fender Jazz Bass or P Bass can sometimes kind of get lost in a mix, but this thing never does. It's got a really powerful sound that always just cuts through. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the features of this bass, showing you what it sounds like. I'll show you what I love about this bass, and I'll also show you two things that I absolutely hate about this bass, because there are two things that I really hate about it. So if you wanna see all that, make sure you stick around. All right, so let's start this off by telling you what bass this is and then walking you through some of the features. So this is an Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray 5. It's a five string Music Man Stingray and it's got four knobs and a three-way switch right here. The first knob is a volume knob and these three knobs right here are EQ controls for the preamp. So this is a treble boost and cut, mid-range boost and cut, and bass boost and cut. And this switch right here, it splits the coils in the pickup in different ways. So if you have it all the way towards the neck, it's what's called series. If you have it in the middle, it's single coil. So it's a little more similar to like a Fender Jazz Bass. And if you have it all the way towards the bridge, it's what's called parallel mode. Now if you have a four string version of this bass, it doesn't have this switch. It's always in series mode. So series is really like the classic, authentic Music Man Stingray sound. If you have a four string bass, you're always in series. If you have a five string, you have these two other options. So let's see what these sound like. I'm gonna turn the volume knob up. These are all flat. Let me just make sure. Yep, they're all right down the middle. And right now I'm in series mode. So let's play something finger style, see what it sounds like. So that's with the EQ flat series mode. Let's go to the middle now, single coil. You'll notice that it sounds a little bit thinner. And now we'll go to parallel mode and it'll sound even thinner. All right, so now let's check out some slapping with the three different pickup positions. Now again, the EQ is completely flat. We're just testing out the pickup positions with this switch. So we're gonna start with it all the way towards the neck, which is series. Let's see what that sounds like. So now let's try out the middle position, which is single coil. And now the bridge position, parallel. That was series mode. Let's try single coil. And now let's try the parallel mode. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the three different pickup positions do. So let's go back to more finger style stuff and see how this sounds. So I have it in series right now. I'm gonna boost the mids a little bit, keep everything else flat. And let's try it in the parallel mode. Now 
Now one note on this real quick, I just wanna talk about articulation and groove and dynamics and feel because this is really important, more important than gear. Now if you had the greatest, most expensive bass in the world, most expensive amp, you had the greatest everything, okay? And you showed up playing with no dynamics, no feel, no groove. You played this line like this. And I showed up with a really cheap bass, cheap gear, but added groove, feel, dynamics, articulation, all that stuff to the playing. That's just gonna sound better, it's gonna feel better, and it doesn't even matter what bass you're playing, which is why I always say you can give a great bass to a mediocre bass player and he'll make it sound mediocre. And you can give a cheap bass to a great bass player and he'll make it sound great. And this is the stuff that you can't buy. You have to learn this stuff, you have to practice, you have to put the work in, you have to practice your playing, work on your hands. This is what they mean when they say that sound and tone is all in the hands. It's how you play the notes, how you play the instrument, how you articulate the notes, the dynamics you're adding in, the feel, the groove, and that really depends on the player. Every player is gonna have their own kind of feel, their own kind of groove, and that's what you have to really focus on and work on more so than gear. All right, so now that that's out of the way, back to the review. Let's uh, play around with the EQ a little bit. I'm gonna make some just drastic moves on this EQ just so we can hear what it's doing. So let's just play through the different strings playing around with the EQ. So right now it's flat. Now let's boost the treble all the way up. And now let's cut it all the way. And now let's do that with the mids. Boost it all the way up. And now let's cut it all the way. Big difference right there. So you can see that this is actually a pretty powerful EQ and a little bit goes a long way on this thing. It really shapes the sound in a really, really nice way. And uh, there's a lot that you can do with this thing. Now I wouldn't say that this is a very versatile bass because it really only does one kind of sound but you can really shape the tone of that sound a lot with this switch and these three EQ parameters right here. All right, so let's play around with this a little bit more. Let me, uh, I'm gonna boost the bass a little bit now, so. So a great little reggae sound right there. Just put it all the way in series, boost the bass a little bit. All right, so now let's check out the low B on this thing, because the low B sounds pretty awesome on this bass. I went back to series mode, the EQ is still flat. Let's just see what this sounds like. Now let's go to the middle position, single coil. And now in the bridge position, parallel. And let's mess around with the EQ a little bit. I'm gonna go back to series and I'm gonna boost the mids a little bit. And you'll notice that there's drastic difference in the sound when you boost this thing. Here's without it. Back with it. That's a great sound right there. I really like that when it's in series with the mids boosted a little bit for finger style. And one of the things that I love playing on this bass is solo bass arrangements. It responds so well to tapping, to chords. It just sounds so good on it and so easy to play. Just really nice to tap on this bass and chords sound really good too. Just 
so nice. Really nice to play chords, tapping, it sounds good, it's easy to play. And my favorite setting for that stuff is the switch all the way towards the bridge position. That parallel mode sounds really good for it. It sounds a little bit thinner, but it's good because it removes some of the muddiness for chords. And I boost the bass a little bit just to get a little bit more low end. Now let's just talk real quick about the two things that I hate about this bass, because I know you're wondering. And one of the things is how heavy it is. Man, this bass is heavy. These days I can only handle like 45 minutes to an hour before this whole part right here with the strap is just starts hurting real bad and I just need a break. So if I'm playing a really long gig, I actually have a hard time playing this bass now just because of how heavy it is because it really starts hurting. So I wish it was a little bit lighter. The weight is something that is really starting to bother me after playing this for so many years. I'm just getting kind of tired of it. I just want something that's a little bit lighter. And the other thing is that I can't really pull off to an open string on the G string because the edges of the fret are kind of rounded and the G string is really close to the edge. So when I try to pull down to pull off, it comes off the fretboard and it mutes it like that. So I can So when I try to pull off, it mutes it and then pulls off. So as you can see, the G string is really close to the edge of the fretboard here, and the frets are kind of rounded on the end there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's definitely not as flat as it is with the fender. So if I pull off just a little bit, it's out of the fretboard right there. So doing this, it's impossible because it keeps doing that. Really terrible. So see on the Fender, this is the jazz bass, there's a lot of room from the G string until the edge of the fretboard and the frets aren't rounded on the edges like they are on the Stingray. So I can pull it down quite a bit until I hit the edge of the fretboard. So pulling off on this, not a problem. A lot nicer, a lot cleaner, much better than on the Stingray. On the Stingray I can't do that because I pull it off just a little bit and it comes off the fretboard. And that really bothers me because I love doing that. It's something I love doing when I'm playing funk, when I'm playing slap, I love just pulling off to the open string and I can't do it on this bass because it always comes off the fretboard and mutes like that. So those are the two things that I really hate is that pulling off on the G string keeps coming off the fretboard and the weight but everything else is just fantastic. So that is the bass right there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I showed you a little bit of everything. Chords, tapping, slap, finger style. If you guys have any questions let me know. If there's anything else you want to see in the review, I can make a part two. I can show you other stuff. Just leave a comment. Let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.